Hello my friends, myself Ramesh Chuk. In my last videos, we discussed about issuing, acquiring a merchant and how the transaction is traversed between the acquirer and issuer through the payment system and we also understood about the owners and offers concept. Now in this video, we are going to cover a new topic which is the PIN translation. So you have your credit card, when you use your credit card on any of the terminals, whether it's a post device or an ATM machine, so you enter your PIN number over there. Okay, you have your clear PIN which is a 4 digit or a 6 digit PIN number. But through the network that PIN, how PIN travels and how it reaches to your issuer, how your issuer validates the PIN, this is something we are going to cover in this session today. So again we will take the same example. You went to the supermarket, you use your credit card there and you enter your PIN number over here. So this is the post terminal, okay, so and this is acquiring bank. So as of now I will draw only these two, it is acquiring bank. So now let's understand first of all how the pin is translated between these two entities. So first of all we will understand how a pin is translated between a post terminal and an acquiring bank. Normally I will tell you if bank uh, is an acquirer, they use the services of any post provider. Okay, so they can be a post provider who install the application of post. So normally we call it as TMS or MMS which is a terminal management system or merchant management system. So this is a separate application. This particular software is connected to the network or app of acquiring bank. Okay, so both are connected. When a pin is entered at the post terminal, it is sent to the acquiring bank in a different format. So we will see how. <coughs> Now both are connected. Now I'll tell you, you as a customer, you enter your pin here 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? But now acquiring bank, what they will receive from the post, this is something I'm, I'm going to tell you. Now there are always keys exchanged between the post application and the acquiring bank. There are various methods of you know the exchanging a pin or uh, exchanging a key. It could be a static or a dynamic. So normally for static we share the ZPK which is a zonal pin key and for duckpick method we share the BDK it is for so it, it could be possible this post terminal and between the acquiring bank they might be using ZPK or they might be using the duckpick. So, as of now in this session we will not go in the detail of BDK and the ZPK but we will understand how the pin is translated from here to here. So when you enter the 1, 2, 3, 4 what will happen this post application will use an algorithm to translate this pin to some other value. So they will use either the ZPK or BDK. So the same key has been exchanged between these two but under the ZMK which is a zonal master key. So what is ZMK? Those things about the key concept we will cover in some other video. So as of now for us to understand a key pair has been shared, has been exchanged between post and acquire. Now 1, 2, 3, 4 when you enter this pin this post device will apply some algorithm and will translate it to a 16 hexadecimal number 16 digit hexadecimal number for example 1 2 3 4 will become a 5 d c up to 16 digit of number so what happens you entered 1 2 3 4 c but it has been changed to some other value so this is the safety of your pin so you are entering a clear pin only at this level even nobody knows what pin you are entering if you are entering it very safely at the post device 
So once you enter, the post machine will apply some algorithm based on the pin translation method which we are using, and they will the post application will apply an algorithm to translate it to some other 16 hexadecimal digit value. So now what will happen? Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, this acquirer will receive A, 5, D, C up to a 16 digit number. What acquiring bank will do? As I said here, the same pair of keys will be exchanged between these two. Alright? So it eventually means the algorithm which post application has used, they must have used these keys. Based on the keys, they would have sent some command. They would they should have used some HSM algorithm or whatever it is, pin translation algorithm and they gave the pin block. Now this acquiring bank, what they will do? They will also use some algorithm, okay, one of the HSM command they will use and they will translate this pin to now some other number, but which number it is. Now here, the next entity will come into the picture. So this is... payment system it is for example now we will assume it is visa so now this way there was a key exchange between these two here also because both are now two different entities right the bank acquiring bank has their own application visa they have their own processor so now these two also will exchange some key what that key will be normally the AWK is exchanged between acquirer and visa under the ZMK. So AWK is acquirer working key. This key is exchanged between visa and acquiring bank under a common key which is a zonal master key. Now what will happen? <coughs> when acquiring bank will apply the algorithm, they will use both the key First of all the ZPK to understand what value was sent. So first of all they will translate from ZPK to AWK. Do you understand now what they did? 1, 2, 3, 4, A5, D7. This ZPK they will decrypt the key. So this will give 1, 2, 3, 4 again. And now this 1, 2, 3, 4 will be translated to some other key. So they will get a new value, for example, 5, 6, C, A, so up to a 16 digit number. So now what happened? This key, this was under VPK or the BDK. Now this is under AWK. So now, while sending the pin to payment system, what an acquiring bank did? They translate the pin to the AWK to the key which was exchanged between these two payment systems so that the next party where they are forwarding this request they should be able to understand this 16 digit hexadecimal value. <coughs> so I will rub this part now. Now the key which we have is under the AWK 567 C A okay this is a 16 digit value under AWK and this is with right now with visa <coughs> now the third entity the last entity will come into the picture who is the issuer so this is issuer bank issuer bank is the one who has provided you this pin 1, 2, 3, 4 which you entered at the post terminal right because when you apply for a card you got a card a plastic and then a separate envelope in which the pin number would be there so you go to the ATM or some device either you start using the same pin which was there in the envelope or you change it as per your convenient as per your choice so it means that pin was generated by this bank so yani this bank only can validate whether the pin which you are entering in the post terminal is correct or not. So for post device doesn't know which pin you have, they just receive it, they cannot validate. They cannot compare with the one which they have provided, right? So that's the reason they just translated 
just for the safety purpose, for the security purpose, because the pin is going to traverse through the network. So it is always safe to translate the pin to some other value, so that no one can actually decrypt that. Okay? So that's the reason pin has been, you know, going through the, all these entities with some encryption logic, with some translation logic. So now this is something we reach to the final point here. Now the pin translation should happen here and here. What is that key which, been, which is exchanged between these two is normally the issuer working key under the ZMK. Since it is issuer, so there is a key issuer working key IWK under the ZMK is exchanged between payment system and issuer. Now the, this pin block is right now with Visa. Now what Visa will do? They will apply again their algorithm of pin translation. They will translate the pin now. Visa, Visa received the pin block from acquiring under the AWK. So it eventually means for sending it to issuer bank, we have to translate this pin block to IWK, right? So now the pin translation will happen at Visa level, at payment system level from AWK to IWK. So this pin block again will be converted into a new value 1, 2, E, F up to a 16 digit value. So here also how it happens. Now the visa has translated the pin to the finally issuer working key. 1 to here this is again a 16 digit. So this is just a translation of pin. So pin is being traversed from here till here so far. Now this 1 to EF, this will be sent to the issuer. Now issuer is the last entity in this diagram. Because after issuer there is nothing, right? So now because issuer doesn't need to send it to further any uh, entity as of now in this diagram, in this example. So what issuer will... So when issuer bank receives this pin block which is under the IWK issuer working key they also have a PVK which is a pin verification key this is the key which an issuer bank use to generate this pin 1234 which you entered so basically they use this key internally in the system while creating your card okay so they run the uh, pin mailer so you get the pin block in a envelope form so this is the key so now when they receive it okay so they will prepare one hsm command and will send it to the hsm what hsm will do the hsm will translate the pin first of all to the iwk it's not actually a translation it will just get the pin because the pin block was under the iwk and the pin block also you pass so they will basically use these two IWK, PBK, card number, some other stuff and will validate the So, it eventually means issuer bank by using the keys required for the pin validation as well as the value which is stored in the database they will validate this pin which was entered at the post terminal and will say whether this is a correct pin or incorrect pin So, if the pin is correct they will simply approve the transaction they will say the pin validation is successful if the pin is incorrect, for example, the actual pin is 1234, but somebody is trying some random number 5678, so issuer will reject the pin. So now, there are two types of visa. As of now, I'll tell you only two. One is IBM and the other one is Visa PVB method. So the issuer, whichever method they have used to generate this pin, so the same method they will use to validate the pin entered. So for IBM method, the HSM command is EA and for Visa, this is EC which is used to validate. So this command will use IWK, PVK, pin block. Okay, so all those things this command will use and the same EC will also use. However, about the detail of IBM in Visa PPV method, we can discuss in further videos. But as of now, for your information, for you to understand it in a better way, the issuer system will use one of the method to validate the pin. There can be some other commands also depending on which pin block or pin translation method we are using. 
so there are like ck or cm there are other commands also so it depends you know internally in issue system and within this process what are the various pin method you are using so based on that the hsm command will be sent to validate the pin i will quickly do a recap what actually happened in this diagram so at the post terminal post terminal uses either a zpk or a bdk they encrypted the pin they gave it to acquirer what acquirer did acquirer translated it from zpk to awk they gave it to visa what visa did they translated from awk to iwk and what issuer did they use the iwk pvk to validate the so this is the complete flow of pin translation the pin which you entered here in clear format 1 2 3 4 it has been traversing through the network in a secure way because at every stage the pin is being translated to some other value so now i'll tell you just one small thing the data element or the iso field which contains the pin block like every after every step we have a pin block here also we have a pin block here also we have a pin block and issuer will also commonly field used to you know contain this value the data the pin block that element is data element 52 if you read the specification of any of the system any visa mastercard or any post application interface specification so you will find the detail of data element 52 so this data element 52 supports a 16 digit hexadecimal value so whenever a post system or acquiring system or any issuing acquiring or visa system they are forwarding the pin block data value so they will send the pin block into the iso field 50 so this is all about the pin translation i hope this lecture you know will help you understand the concept and especially those who are fresher to the card and payment domain they can use this knowledge in your work or in your life and can actually see the and how in the live example because they must be working in a test environment or a live environment wherever they are working so they can try to understand from their coding from their application how actually this translate uh, they can check the ibm pin method or the visa pin method which we would also cover in the videos in the further videos but yes they can go in more detail and can verify all those things they can study this all about and in case you have any further question from me to answer then you can definitely write a comment in my youtube channel thank you